Okay, uh, welcome to Six Scale, everybody. It's October 10th. <clears throat> I shared a link to the document in the chat. Uh, please feel free to add yourself as a, an attendee, please. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, let's get started with the first uh, item. Okay, so we're gonna do some review of the periodic job results because um, we've got some changes. LA did merge, we got a latest patch merged for deletion times. Let's just take a quick look at them. Um, let's see, I think it's only gonna affect this test or these two tests because these are the only ones who actually track deletion. So let's have a look. See what the data shows us. So 100 and this is the 600. All right. There's the 100. Cool. Looks pretty good, Alay. Oh, awesome. And then let's take a look at the 600. I think this is 600, right? Doesn't look like it. Oh, this is also 100. Okay, this is 200, okay. Two hundred. Um, oh, it looks like we don't get them. Okay, but it's, well, maybe this was run to, maybe this was run before. My passage, that's odd. <clears throat> Yeah, I don't see the deletions on this one. That's weird, that was from this morning. Yeah. I wonder why. Let me pick a different one. All right, here is also 200. Let's see if we have it. No, we don't. Um, okay. Okay, that's strange. I don't know why these don't get it. So these are different. They are different jobs. I mean, they have, or I should say, they have different scripts that trigger these things. But it's all using the perf tool, which should have the same code. Oh, you know what? It must be using. It must. Uh, it. It. I think that. No, that can't be. It should be using the new, the latest Qbert. That's the only thing I could think of why it wouldn't be why wouldn't be getting this why wouldn't be getting your changes. So which are which are these jobs? Um, can you? <laughs> this is the. Um, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. This is the. Um, this is the periodic. Uh, cluster okay, density yeah. test. Yeah. So this is the one that runs in the performance cluster. It's isolated in the performance cluster that runs between two hundred and six hundred. PMs and then delete some. And which one was it that you saw the uh, successful? Uh, it, it was, that was the, okay. That was this one. So as you know, that's a, that doesn't make sense. So this is this performance cluster also, well, this one also runs on the same hardware. It's just a hundred. So, but this one had it. I don't know why. Yeah, there it is. So this one's got it. Okay. okay, but I don't know why this one doesn't. Uh, I'll try to dig into it. It's a ten twenty. Oh, this is set from ten nineteen. No, that's still. I think it's still merged. But odd. Uh, I mean, this didn't. This didn't merge yesterday. This was like a week ago, or like maybe it was less than a week ago. But it should yeah. still be here. Yeah. It was. This week, actually, but this week. Uh, the, yeah, the CI was having. Oh, here we go. So, so that one has it. It's just I don't know. Maybe this. Okay, maybe we just have to have to wait. Have to wait. 
it waited long enough I, and it just hasn't made its way through. Yeah. Okay. All right. So then I guess, so I guess the data we do have, so this is a hundred and then what, what did I say this one was? This was, um, okay, this is 200. Okay, so this is a 200 that has it. All right, so we, we got, I think we have the data we want. We don't have the 600, but that's okay. We'll we'll get it eventually. So this is our numbers. All right, so worst case, 13 seconds. <laughs> oh boy, okay, that's interesting. P95, so okay, six seconds. And then, oh, that's, okay, that's pretty consistent. That's pretty good. Oh, actually, that's, that's really good. Okay, so we have, so we've doubled the number of VMs and our p95 is almost ex almost identical okay that's pretty good uh p50 is pretty close i mean that's that's 0.3 seconds that's not very noticeable so that's actually really good okay yeah i wonder that good. in second do we have like a great deletion time or or something like that do we have a what um graceful deletion time <clears throat> Yeah, there is a default. Okay. I don't remember how long it is though. That's a good question. I as yeah, as to whether they're affected here. I I um so I guess what what so there is a there's a I guess the way to think about it is there there is a default graceful deletion time, but if the guest exits, um it basically just gives the guest time to exit. So if the guest exits really quickly, then it will make it seem like um so i guess yeah it could affect our numbers is i guess the point yeah because if if we're going to give the guest time and deletion we're also factoring that that is a variable that will affect this so if we do i think we have probably a better experiment with to take away the graceful the or maybe lower it and then we'll see some failed or we may see some failed but it should provide us a more consistent measurement on the control plane yeah yeah, okay. Let me make a note. Yeah, I think we were just gonna lower it or something. Okay. All right, that looks pretty good. I, I, this is, these are good results. This is, so this is actually totally the opposite of what we're seeing on create. So that's really good to see. That seems like, you know, we're not getting any crazy numbers. Well, let's just see what happens on the 600 or whenever it comes through. We'll see how this holds the P50 and the P95. But that's really encouraging to see that this is holding. Okay, cool. All right. I think we're good with the periodic results. I think the rest, everything's staying green. So it looks good that we're staying within our thresholds. Okay. <clears throat> All right, let's go to the, um, let's go to our second point. So we have um, Caleb and, and Hippie here. Hey guys, how's it going? Good, thank you. Hello, hello. Um, we have been uh, pairing with Kat on uh, a few different things related to uh, the using kubevert and especially the cluster api provider and uh Kat had mentioned that here would be the place to discuss um <coughs> some things around the cluster api provider so that um we can get some discussion around some of the behaviors of it uh, oh and i think Kat has just joined us now um i so I'll drop some links because I have a few. Yeah. I think the overall pattern that we're missing is the ability to specify the style of initialization. Um, there is cloud init and no cloud, and it's hard coded into the Google provider. Kubert cluster API, yeah, there it is. Um, we just hard code to do a where does it say it? I think it's that Kubert v1 cloud and it can figure out to use it as a system. I'm having a little trouble hearing. Um, 
I, I don't know if it's on my end or, but I, I, I'm getting like, um, I'm getting like every other syllable. Yeah, same with me. <clears throat> Sorry, I have to speak a bit louder. I tend to have a soft voice even in person. I'm working in this uh, this provider here, and we're trying to um, uh, drop some more link. link. That's it. What that second one? Sorry, I was we were chatting about this, and and smile, but I can't see it. So with the cluster API provided, there's a, a secret that is the user data for the, the machine with no cloud coming up. And so there's a, a Kubernetes secret that gets uh, mounted into the virtual machine somehow using um, no cloud here. And it's got a, a hard coded name you see on line 147. And so what we're trying to do is make sure that that user data gets mounted through, I think is what we're trying to do. Uh, and we're unsure if it's coming through. Okay. So let me let me try to uh, let me try to repeat back just so I understand. Is it so you want so you've got you're using CloudNet, you're using the you've got a CloudNet disk and you have um, you've got the secret here that's hard coded. You just want to make sure you're trying to make sure that the the CloudNet config drive that you have in the secret is getting to the guest. Is that is that right? Uh, yeah, so we're looking to be able to specify which strategy to use for the, the provider, the no cloud or, or um, what was the other one that we're using, no cloud or config drive. So those are the two strategies that we found. And we want to have it so we can specify which strategy to use, because I think it, it's automatic and whatever it's picking is not the one that works for us kind of thing. Find 145 needs to be able to be swapped out for not just a Kubert V1 cloud init config drive for it, but a cloud init no cloud config. So we have an option over two different styles to make sure we open. That sounds about right. That's my conversation. Um, right. I, I may not be understanding. So I um so you, uh, I, I still uh, what's still unclear to me is like so I, I think what I'm hearing is that you um you using CloudNet you want to get um uh so you just you want to get some of the data you want to get the data to the guest um but is it your is you you're just trying to find a way to do it whether it's going to be using the CloudNet config drive or using the no cloud format like this that, that you're just trying to get it to the guest that's yeah. what you're looking for that's some guidance correct. Uh, when we're so in, in cluster API, we're stuck with using just cloud init config drive, and we're trying to target Talos. And Talos is expecting no cloud, the style when we're using Kubert, okay. which is style of initialization. And so we need to be able to utilize no cloud as an option. And right now it's hard coded to um, cloud init instead of uh, no cloud. Okay. Um... Well, let's see. I think um, maybe we maybe it just needs to change the uh, to support either option. I mean, I let me see where um, I don't know off the top of my head, but I remember where this is in Kubert. Let me take a look. We can do a lot of comparison. I think this is. And um, let's see. Uh, 
play? Do you remember off the top of your head? I was like, you, I'm looking at this yesterday because you patched this. So I don't remember. I thought it was Invert Handler. Um, and then I patched this recently too, actually. Yeah, the cloud init has its own package. Uh, Uh, let's see. No, oh, I just saw it. So guys, while Ryan, Ryan brings that up, um, so what I'm understanding is that this cluster API provider is creating a virtual machine instance uh, from, from that function. And you want to specify uh, a config option where no cloud is also um, uh, configurable, whereas it is right now hard coded to a spec value, which is cloud init config. Okay, awesome. Uh, by any chance, I do uh, create an issue on on cluster API provider Kubert uh, repository. Um, I see on their charter that they meet Tuesdays at 8 a.m. 8 p.m. 8 a.m. Pacific. So um, creating an issue on that repository might get get you some traction. Um, which meeting is that? I, we were trying to track down what meeting this may have been the last one. Um, it's one well, like you said there was a Tuesday meeting, right? There yeah, was... I just pasted the uh, okay. the link on the office hour links in in the chat. Okay. Thanks, Steve. Replace the life cycle. All right, we'll create an issue. Should we create that in the Kubert, the cluster API provider for Kubert? Yeah, I would create it against this repository, uh, cluster API provider Kubert. Okay, cool. Thanks. Absolutely, yeah. we will do that. Yeah, that sounds good, guys. Here is the reference that I was looking for. So here's like the types. Um, like you can see how. Um, the way that this is done in tree with cloud and that you can see how it looks at the, the volume types and and that's how it gets resolved so i think let's see where was the um okay so the volume source right here so i basically i it seems like it could just be done very similar to what's done here and and the, just looking at the volume source or the volume type and then um either going into no cloud or going into the config drive type um, would be how you can make it so that it supports both. Yeah, that looks quite good. Here, I'll give you a link. So you got this as a reference, something something you could reference in the issue. Thank you. Sure, no problem, guys. Uh, thanks for narrowing that down to paper slides before. That's going to be great. Cool. So do you guys, and I have another another question for you guys. So you guys are, are you guys working on cloud, uh, the cluster API provider for Kubert? Is that, uh, sounds like something you're Not interested directly. in? Is this, okay. What the effort is, is to try to create for all CNCF projects, the ability to uh, click create a cloud native development environment. Right now we're, we've been working with cluster API directly targeting hard, uh, cloud providers, like, uh, mm -hmm. um, uh, back at Equinix and, and others, we're trying to find something that'll scale better for cost. So we're using, again, cluster API to target Kubert so we can have a, a you know, cluster with a bunch of these things for, to bring up um, Coder, which inside of Coder, we're using Terraform to create workspaces. And instead of the workspaces being individual VMs, they are cluster API created Kubert clusters. Uh, but we're going to have the fully working ingress and everything with the uh, the, the environment of the dev container in the pod that's exposed to connect through the Pacific and the web. 
Oh, that's cool. And then I'm going to try to circulate at KubeCon to try to go, hey, here's how the CNCF can help you onboard contributors fast to make contributions to your project. And so, I, by the way, Hippie Hacker and Caleb River uh, were part of the CNCF strategic initiative uh, kind of consulting. And mm -hmm. so part of our job is to try to find things that can help out in the next two to five years to make things better for the entire ecosystem. Um, so not, not specifically working on Kubert cluster API, but my interest is very aligned with the health of the ecosystem. Oh, cool. Okay. Well, that's awesome. Yeah, that, that's a cool use case. That's awesome. Cool, guys. I'm excited okay. to see what's going to come of it. There's been some really wonderful and cool people gather around the idea. <clears throat> and um, I that's think we're going to see some pretty lovely things happen within the next month. And I'll be a good guy when I can track it out. Cool. Yeah, I'll I'll be there next week. Cool. That's exciting. Cool, cool. Okay. Thanks for sharing, guys. Okay. Absolutely. All right. I think um thank you Kat, for so, uh, directing us here. Otherwise we'd be a bit lost about helping people you know, direct us to the right place. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good. Yeah, well glad we can help and uh that's good. Okay. All right. Um Ale, you've got one more issue here. So this is uh another yeah. Okay. Informers in Vert Controller. Okay. Fun stuff. <laughs> I've, I remember having this conversation for many times over. I guess maybe this is. Uh, yeah. This so. Is happening again. Um, the the PR nine seven nine three five removed word um, informers for this uh, cluster type mm -hmm. uh, flavors. Well, sorry, CRD flavors. Um, when, okay. when they changed over to VMI preference instance type, they removed uh, the informers in the controller. And then um, there is another PR tracking um, the changes that's. Um, uh, bringing it back, I just wanted to make sure uh, we have like we follow this in six scales because it's going to be like it'll probably impact uh, the performance. So, okay, first machine flavor and machine preference. The good thing is that it, this um, this was only effect affecting the virtual machine and like virtual machine flavor and virtual machine preference uh, controllers. So I'm not sure like it will. I'm not sure how much impact we will have in the uh, the density test numbers. Uh, but just wanted to share as uh, something that that I found while digging into other issues. Yeah, let's see. Um, so this is the only two. So it's only these two APIs that were got. I, I'm just trying to. What was the reason of these being removed? I don't. So both flavors have proven problematic. So um, I'm actually surprised. As they were added, I mean, I, I don't know what he means, but I, I, I haven't dug into this. So I wonder what, he, I don't know what he means by informers because Qbert doesn't really have them. They have they have basically the, their own implementation of, of an informer. It's not really, I don't know if that's what he means or if he means actual controller runtime. No, the flavors, so um, flavors is an API that replaced VMI preset in, in right. between. Um, version 48 through 55 and while working on that removal and after 45 flavors took vmi preference uh, type uh, so it's the same api that has been changing names so while this rename was happening um on the uh on this api the the um, word Word client has a package that gives um, interface to the actual underlying uh, client go informer, and that was removed. Uh, and for a while, like for, for four or five releases, up, upstream main doesn't use um, the informer for reconciling, and now it is going to be added back with the PR8537. Okay, I wonder. Um, we don't we don't do anything with flavor. Um, 
I wonder if, so that would be interesting if, you know, to your earlier point of saying, if changing it back will affect our current jobs, that would be interesting. I also wonder, um, I also wonder the, yeah, see, we don't, we just don't use flavors. Like it would be interesting to see what would, how we can measure flavors. Um, then we maybe have a, a measurement on this, but I, I don't know. I, I don't know if it's something that we could do, but like, um, or maybe we could ask um we could yeah, ask um, this is just an fyi that this is yeah. something going on we might be might not be interested um but the only thing i want to make sure is because this is something performance related if this is this gets backported we should have it all the way back when we were it was introduced so um that that is the one thing and then regarding the measurements uh I'm I'm not sure if we have it in our plans. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what I mean. It's like if we if we don't have the measurements, I, we have no way to say like. I, I like at least I don't have a way to say like what the performance difference is. Like that's I guess that's sort of the thing I'm struggling with because um, it's good we should keep an eye on it. Just but but in terms of like if we see our jobs change, but um, I wish we had something with flavors. So that we could actually measure and see, so Lee could see if you know if what the performance change for this is. I mean, it, I don't think it would be that hard. Um, you know, if they asked Lee to write this, I don't think it'd be too hard to write. I can point him to what he needs to do. It's really just. Um, I mean, I think it's just. Uh, it's just a, a. We just need to add a few lines of code just to wrap around the existing creations of the VMI. So we just need to change it to. Um, instead of doing. VMIs, we just create VMs, or we may even already do that, but we just need to do with create a flavor and then create them off a of flavor. So it might be like a tiny change that we could do to support this. So that's, yeah, I don't know. Let me, I, I don't know if it's on this radar. Okay, we can start a thread in Slack. I mean, that might be the best approach to at least, because yeah. I, I do, I do, this is just a good opportunity for us to get, you know, for him and for us to at least get an idea of what the, the scalability changes and performance change that is with him introducing these these changes. Okay, sure. Um, and just another side, like the flavors API is not as critical, I would say, as the VMI, right? Like because we can like theoretically there would only be a certain number of flavors that we create, and it's not going to be used as much as um the the vmi instance uh, yeah you're right so what i what so here's what i'm thinking is like we, we could talk to lee and maybe this this is a um uh you know maybe this is something we could um like have as an additional periodic or something we could have like we we already right now we create you know we have that density test we have like we create 100 200 300 or whatever we could have one of those in there be um based off flavors or something you know, just something like, because we have a few, we have a bunch of data points and maybe we can, we can um, have one of them be, because I, I think there's value in it because we're like, this is an API that people are going to use. And I, and I think, um, I, I don't think we have visibility into it, the overhead at all. Sure. And so I, there's some value in at least having that. And, you know, the hope is like, because to your point, we are still launching the models, right? So like, we can actually, this would be good to see, okay, hey, like, we can compare it to our other jobs and say like, okay, here's 300 at VMIs. Here's, you know, what it is with flavors and VMs, you know, and it shouldn't really be any different. It should be the same. So it's, it actually, it's a good, it's a good way for us to get, um, it's actually a good comparison for us to see. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I mean, we can, we can start that thread and even put yeah. it on the VR. If this needs anything, we can help out. But yeah, um, like creates VMs with a. All right, so that let's uh, I can start a thread on that. Let's just see what he thinks, and um, and uh, we could point him in the direction to do that. Maybe it could be a separate for an SPR or part of the PR or something. Okay, cool. Thanks for bringing that up. I think that's that's good to have that discussion. Okay. Cool, folks. Okay. Um, any other um, any other topics? I think that's all we have on the list. Any other 
last minute thoughts, topics before we finish. Nope. Okay. All right, everyone. Thanks for your time. And next week, um, next week's going to be KubeCon. So I, I, we're not going to have this meeting. So the next meeting will be in two weeks. All right, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Have a nice day. Thank you. Bye-bye.